esta mañana, por favor. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre, mi hijo, mi padre, por la gracia, por la oportunidad, por todos los procesos. Padre, que me hace 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 que
your life. Oh, hallelujah. It's only the Savior that capitalized in your life. Amen. So it says the city of David, a Savior, capital S, the greatness of the Savior, which is Christ the Lord, the Messiah, the Lord. Amen. Here we can clearly see what Jesus came to do for our lives and for the mankind and for the sinners of the world. He came to save the world. But to further understand it, we must look at the Greek equivalent for the word Savior. Capital S, Savior. We're talking about Christ here and its definition, and we must search the scriptures. Amen? You know what I do? The Greek word for capital S, Savior, is solter, which means deliverer. Amen? That is why, that's why I always mention the Greek. Amen. The original language, because in that, in the Greek or in the Hebrew, is a deeper and more powerful meaning of Jesus Christ, the Savior. And I'm not talking about a, a, a small letter Savior. I'm talking about capital letter Savior. Amen. It means yeah. deliverer. That is God or Christ. Amen. When we're talking about, when we're thinking about Savior. We're talking about God or Christ the Lord. Amen? Amen. So according to Luke chapter 2, verse 11, in this Greek definition, the Lord Jesus is the deliverer who is also the Messiah, amen, who will save the Jewish people and the world from their sins. Amen? This truth was revealed to Joseph in a dream by an angel. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 through 21. Esta verdad fue revelado a José en un, en una, en un sueño por, por medio del ángel. En Mateo versículo, capítulo 1, versículo 20 a 21. That said, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And it's not by your hands, Joseph. It's not by you having sex with her, Joseph. It is conceived by the Holy Ghost, which means it is God. Amen. It is God-empowered pregnancy. Amen. It is conceived by the Holy Ghost, which is conceived in you. When you accept the Christ, the Holy Spirit conceived in you a new creation. Amen. A new baby in Christ. Amen. You received a new birth. Cuando tú aceptaste a Cristo, tú recibiste este un tú tú este cuando el Espíritu Santo entró adentro de ti, lo que consumó adentro de ti es un nuevo bebé en Cristo. Amen, amen. Yes, it is. What consumed you and what birthed in you is a new baby in Christ. Lo que nació adentro de ti cuando el Espíritu Santo te consumó adentro de ti es nació un nuevo bebé en Cristo. And it's from the power of God. It is of the Holy Ghost. What was conceived in you was of the Holy Ghost. Was a new babe in Christ. So it says, which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. There within the word of Yeshua, hallelujah, means he shall save his people from their sins. The name of Jesus in Hebrew means God is salvation. Amen. The very name of Jesus in Hebrew says, says it all, which means God is salvation. Amen. El, 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 mero, el mero hombre de Cristo El mero nombre de Jesús, que es Yeshua, significa Dios es salvación. So, en medio del, del significado de Jesús, dice Dios es salvación. So, when we, you, so when you call upon the name of Jesus, you're calling upon, upon, the, you're calling upon the Savior of the world. You're saying, God is salvation. When you say Jesus or Yeshua, you're saying, God is salvation. Amen. Amen. There's powerful name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Only God Himself could save His people.
people from their sins. Amen? I don't see how, I don't understand how people can discount that, that Jesus is not God. Because in the very name of Jesus says that Jesus is God. It says God is salvation. Jesus, Yeshua, however you want to pronounce his name, it means God is salvation. Dios es salvación. No importa cómo lo pronuncias, en español, o en inglés, o en hebreo, significa Dios es salvación. Amen. The power, the name of Jesus is so powerful, brothers and sisters. So he, Jesus, so he had to send someone into the world that was perfect and holy and blameless and sinless. He, the Father, had to send someone with the same divine nature as he was. Amen. The only one who could fit that description was his only begotten son, Jesus, who was divine in God nature to be the Messiah, deliverer, and savior of the world. Amen. Dios el Padre tuvo que mandar a alguien que tenía la misma divinidad que él solamente por medio de Cristo, Jesús. Solamente hijo de Dios es el único que tenía el mismo naturaleza divina igual como el Padre. El Padre es Dios y el Hijo es Dios. ¿Verdad? Solamente Dios pudo este, salvar al, al mundo. Amen. Amen. Only God himself can save the world. So he sent his only begotten son. He had to send someone in the same divine nature as he was. The only one who could fit that nature is Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Lord. Jesus is the Prince and Savior, says Acts chapter 5, verse 31, of his people Israel. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a Prince and a Savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Jesus came to give his people, the Jewish people, in Israel, an opportunity to repent and be forgiven of their sins. <clears throat> Jesus, according to Acts chapter 13, verse 33, Jesus, acuerdo a Hechos 13, 23, was God's promised Savior to the Jewish people. Era <clears throat> el, el Salvador prometido de Dios para la gente de Israel. And it says, of this man's seed, <clears throat> See, if had God, according to his promise, raised up unto Israel a Savior, which is Jesus. And God kept his promise when Jesus suffered and died on the cross for their sins. God keeps his promises. Dios cumple sus promesas. Amen. Yes, it is. And Jesus, as God in the flesh, had to fulfill that promise to die for, on the cross for our sins to bring us what? salvation and eternal life so that the Holy Ghost may consume us and birth in us and conceive, conceive in us a new creation amen it's so that the Holy Ghost may conceive in you a new person, a new babe in Christ just as the Holy Ghost conceived Jesus in the womb of Mary. You see the connection, the conception of the Holy Ghost. The same happened to each Christian when we accepted Christ. Yeah. Amen. What's conceived in us is a new Juan or a new Mary Lou or a new Carolina. Amen. A new saint in Christ, a new babe in Christ. Santo Señor. That is covered by the blood of Jesus. God is salvation. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, in Acts chapter 13, 38, 39, that through this man, Jesus, is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him that all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Amen? 
The law of Moses did not justify them. Only Christ, through his death on a cross and resurrection, could they be justified. By his blood are they justified. By his blood are we justified. Amen? <clears throat> this is because God gave the law of Moses to expose the sins and rebellion of his people. And not to save them. The law of Moses was not written to save them, but to, re but to expose their sins so that they may repent. Amen? Plus, the old sacrificial system under the law of Moses to atone for their sins once a year was only temporal. Which is why they could not be justified. Because every year they had to get... They had to do a, a yearly sacrifice to atone for their sins. It was only temporal. But Christ, with, but the atonement of Christ is for once and for all, forever. Amen? The atonement of Christ was once, only, and for all. Amen? So that means that that, that, that offer that Christ did for us, because he was an offering to God, amen, for our sins. He gave himself as an offering, a sacrificial lamb offering for our sins. Amen? Why? Because he loved us so much. Amen? Because he wanted us to, to be conceived of the Holy Ghost, a new creation. Because he says that we must be born again to seek the kingdom of God. We must be born of the water and of the spirit. And the only way that would happen is if we accept Christ and then the Holy Ghost conceives in us a new creation, a new baby in Christ. Amen? That's how Christ makes all things new. Christ, with His Spirit, conceives a new creation in us. And he makes us a new creature. Amen? A new person in Christ. Amen? They needed some other way to atone for the forgiveness of their sins permanently. They needed someone to be the once and for all sacrifice for their sins. A perfect Lamb of God called Jesus would be the one to just to satisfy God's permanent solution to the problem of sin. And boy, sin is a problem these days. Amen? But one person, one God died for those sins. So they may have salvation in eternal life. It will be fulfilled by the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. And by his sacrifice, all that repented and confessed him Lord and believed in their hearts that God raised him from the dead were forgiven, they were saved, and they were justified from all things they ever done wrong in the past. Only through Christ are we justified. Only por medio de Cristo somos justificados. For this is how Jesus came to save his people from their sins, but also for the sins of the world. So what I'm trying to say here, brothers, is that God, that Jesus, that Jesus didn't just die for the sins of his people, of the Jewish people. He also died for the sins of the world. Amen? He came to save the world, right? This means that he's not, all, he's not also the savior of the Jewish people, but he's also the savior of the world. I say that he is also the savior of the world because of what the next three scriptures say about it. Jesucristo no más es el salvador de los israelistas, también es el salvador del mundo. Amen, amen. Yes, Hay tres escrituras que quiero traer en frente que, que habla de que Jesucristo es el salvador del mundo. Por ejemplo, es en Juan capítulo 1, versículo 29. John chapter 1, verse 29, where the apostle writes, The next day, John, which is John the Baptist, See Jesus coming unto him and saying, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. 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 John the Baptist didn't say that he taketh away the sin of the Jewish people. It says that Jesus came. He says, Behold, your Savior, the Lamb of God, the one who taketh away the sin of the world. 
Amen? Jesus is the one whom John was preaching about to his followers. Jesus came after John and was far greater than John ever was. For Jesus existed long before John. Praise God. We serve a Christ that lives forever, that existed, that was and is and always was to come. The Lord was and is and is to come. That, that portion of that that is to come, that is our future. That's what Jesus says. Look up. Lift up your head for your redemption draws nigh. Amen. We are to behold Christ. Amen. That all what John the Baptist was doing was trying to call attention and pointing them to who? Christ. That is so weird. That's what we are supposed to do is point them to Christ. Behold, the Lamb of God, the one that taketh away the sin of the world. He's right there amongst you. He's right there dwelling, in, in, dwelling with us, living with us, showing his glory. Right? Remember that scripture in 1 John chapter 1 and John chapter 1? And the word was made flesh. And we beheld his glory. Right? The only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen? So Christ was right there in the midst of them, and John the Baptist was just pointing straight at him. Behold the Lamb of God, who had taken away the sin of the world. He is the one, the only one. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only one that can save you, world. Right? That's what John the Baptist was saying. Praise the Lord. He always existed and was foreordained before the foundation of the world to be the sinless and spotless Lamb of God who shed his precious blood and gave his life a ransom for many. He didn't give his life a ransom for few. He gave his life a ransom for many. How many? The world. Amen? He gave his life for all. And he gave his life a ransom willingly. Greater no love than this, that a man gave his life for his friends. And the second example, second example, and in, in John, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, verse 1 and 2, Primer Juan, capítulo 2, versículo 1 2, the apostle gives us hope. It says, My little children, these things write I unto you. That ye sin not. Here's the saying that I'm writing this to encourage you, to uplift you, to give you hope so that ye sin not, so you not fall away. It says, if, it says, and if any man sin, he hath an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. <coughs> Amen? Verse 2 And he is the propitiation for our sins. And this is where he points them to Christ. He, Jesus, is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So here John, the one who is beloved of Jesus, right? The young man that always put his, his head upon the breast of Christ. The one that Jesus loved, because the scripture says the beloved one, says that Christ didn't, didn't die just for, for the Jewish people, but he died for all mankind. Says the whole world. Not just a few of us in the world, but says the whole world, the entire world, future people. Christ died for future people. Christ is not done in saving souls. The apostle repeats what John the Baptist had already announced. That Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for the sins of all people, not just the Jewish people. In the third and final example, 
In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, tercer ejemplo en Hebreos 7, 25, the writer assures us that he is able, capital H, he is able, also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. In other words, he lives forever. That's why he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. That's what he's sitting on the right hand of God. Amen. To intercede forever for us. Because it says, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. So we have nothing to, to be terrorized about. We have nothing to fear about, right? Because we got Christ sitting on the right hand of the Father interceding for each and every one of us when we pray, when we go through trials. Amen? Remember the story of today, right? Of, that, of, of the book In the book of Daniel, right? How God gave him the interpretation. God was with, David, with Daniel, when he, when he confronted uh, Nebuchadnezzar, right? That was a great thing to do. That was a bold thing to do because he knew Christ, he knew God was with him. He knew that God was going to give him an interpretation, right? Just like when Christ was with was, was Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego when they were being consumed by the fire. Amen? Even Nebuchadnezzar had, had ordered to, to, uh, to increase the flames. Amen? And Nebuchadnezzar got a big surprise, brothers and sisters. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not being consumed by the fire, but they were being consumed by Christ who was there with them. Amen? The Lord Jesus Christ what the king saw was four individuals inside that fiery furnace. Not three, he saw four. It mentions in the scriptures that he saw four. Amen? Some people were describing it as an angel that was protecting them. But we know who that was. That was Jesus. That was Jesus. Amen? That was Jesus protecting them. That was Jesus that was protecting them. They were being consumed by Christ. And no fire, no nothing could harm them. Because Christ was with them. That's how Jesus Christ interceded for them. Because he li ever liveth to intercede. You see what I'm saying? Christ was showing up in the, in the Old Testament times. And Christ can show up for you even now. Why? Because he ever liveth. To make intercession for them. Amen. Do you see the connection? Praise the Lord. No matter what we've done in the past. No matter how far we have gone. Jesus is able to reach us. And, and meet us where we are. Just like he did for, uh, for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Just like Christ reached out to, da to Daniel in the lion's den. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just like God reached out to, to Daniel in the midst when he was when, when, when he interceded, when he revealed the dream, the interpretation of the dream that King Nebuchadnezzar wanted. Many times God has intervened. Many times Christ has intervened. Amen. Why? Because he was and is to come. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. His word is forever. Hallelujah. And Christ, that's who he is. He ever liveth. He always existed. He was not created by the Father. How many contend? Christ never was created. He is the creator. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is the creator and is the one that everything consists in his hands. Amen. That's when we, we must behold him. That's what John the Baptist said. Behold the Lamb of God, the creator of the world. It's the Lamb of God, the one who, who will save the sins of the world. Hallelujah. 
As long as we come to the Father through Jesus Christ, and we repent and seek His forgiveness, He is able to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is alive and He is willing, just like He was willing, willing to die for you, He's also willing to save you. He's also willing to forgive you. He is also willing and able to intercede for us when we come to God for forgiveness, salvation, and restoration. This is how Jesus came to save the world from their sins. But that's not all. He, is all. he also came to save us and redeem us and make us His glorious church. Amen? That's what, that's what Jesus Christ meant when He told Peter, Upon this rock, I will build my church. Christ is still building His church. To be that spotless and blameless lamb that will be presented before Christ. <coughs> Amen. Christ is building his, his blameless and spotless church. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 through 27, and Ephesians chapter 5, versículo 25 a 27, Paul clearly explains how Jesus would go about doing that. Cristo vino también para crecer su iglesia. Amen. And it says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So, husbands, love your spouse, love your wife, as Christ loved the church. And gave himself for her. Yes, yes. Amen. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without blemish. <coughs> Amen. So it is our jobs, brothers. To honor our wives. Amen? To love our wives. Sacrificially. In other words, when we love our wives, it shouldn't be about us, brothers. We shouldn't be selfish. It's a selfless love. Amen? It's a love that honors Christ. It's a love that honors our wives, that loves our wives. And it's a sacrificial love. Amen? And Christ is the example of that love. Amen? Just as Christ died for her so that he can cleanse her and sanctify her with the washing of water by the word. By the word of Christ. Right? Because he is the word. Right? He is the capital W word that I was talking about. The first thing in the list Jesus had already done. He gave his life for us, his church. The next three items on the list he's currently working on. He's working right now. He's not done with you, brothers and sisters. He's not done with any of us yet. He's still working inside of us. He works us on us daily. He sanctifies us. He cleanses us and washes us when we read and study the Bible, His Word. Right? Every time we open up the Scriptures, brothers and sisters, every time we, we open the Scriptures and we read the Word, we are being purified. We're being sanctified because the Word of God is truth. Right? That's what Christ meant when He said, Lord, sanctify by your truth. Your Word is truth. Amen? That's how He sanctifies us. That is, that's how Christ purifies us. That's how He washes us when we read the Word of God. Jesus does this so on the day of the rapture, He will present us to Himself a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. We will be holy and without fault in His sight. That's going to 
to be the glorious church of Christ. Esa va a ser el glorioso iglesia de Cristo. Que no tiene nada de mancha. ¿Verdad? Nada de manchas. Va a ser completamente santo. Y no va a tener culpas. Ante el Cristo. Amen. And for, in Colossians chapter 1 verse 20 to 23. In Colossenses capítulo 1 versículo 20 a 23. Paul says that Jesus suffered and died in order to reconcile us back to God the Father and to present us holy, blameless, and without fault in Christ's sight. It says, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked, by wicked works, yet now, yet now, has he reconciled. Amen? You see, we were reconciled by what? His blood. Amen? We were once wicked people. We were once sinners. We were once as filthy rags. Amen. But now we are reconciled by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Ahora ya somos reconciliados por medio de la sangre de Cristo. Antes éramos sucios. Antes éramos como un trapo sucio. Antes éramos pecadores. Pero ahora somos reconciliados por medio de la sangre de Cristo Jesús. We are reconciled by the blood of Jesus Christ. And verse 22 says, In the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. <clears throat> so he died and he bled so that we may, so we may present ourselves before Christ unblameable and holy and unreprovable in his sight. You see, that's why Christ died for his church. Right? He came to save the world. But also, he also died to cleanse his church with his blood. Amen? Verse 23. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled. Amen? And be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard. Faith coming by hearing, hearing the word of God, right? They heard the gospel and they believed. They had faith. And which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Where I, Paul, was made a servant of God. Amen? I'm a servant of God. Each of you are supposed to be servants of God. Amen? It says, if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and we're not letting things happen around you, move you away from the, from the truth of the gospel. Grounded. Amen? Grounded. Solid ground. Not on sand. Not on sinking sand. We're not supposed to have a faith of sinking sand. We're supposed to have a faith that is, that is settled and grounded on the solid rock which is Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Yes, it is. So no matter the shaking or the moving, we will not move away from the gospel. Because the world is always going to be shaken all around you. But we should not be moved. We shall not be moved. Because we're grounded and settled in the word of God. In our faith and trust in God. The only way we can remain without spot and wrinkle or blemish, holy and blameless, without fault, is by continuing in the faith, grounded and steadfast in the word of God. Allowing the Holy Spirit to sanctify us, allowing the Holy Spirit to cleanse us, allow the Holy Spirit to wash us, living out the scriptures in thoughts and in words and in actions.
actions and living for Christ like it's your last day. Amen? Amen. Paul said to Titus, Pablo le dijo a Tito, capítulo 2, versículo 14, Titus chapter 2, verse 14, that Jesus gave his life to purify us for himself and to make us his own people. Paul dijo que Jesús este, dio su vida para purificarnos para él y para ser para ser nosotros su propia gente. Amen. It says, it says, who gave himself for us? Who gave himself for us? Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Amen. The capital S Savior, the one, the one whose name says God is salvation. He gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and, pur uh, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Amen? We are supposed to be different from others. Aquí dice que son tan, como cristianos, como discípulos de Cristo, tenemos que ser diferente a otra gente. La gente lo tiene que notar. People are, are supposed to notice that we are different. All right, that we don't that we don't uh, that we don't uh, behave like the crowd. Yeah. Right? We be, that we belong to a specific peculiar group. They may even call us weird. This guy right here is acting weird. He's not doing what we're doing. He's acting peculiar. Have you heard that word? This guy is acting peculiar. Right? Peculiarism is not a negative thing, it's a positive thing when it comes to being a disciple of Christ. Amen? Zealous for good works. We have a desire to serve God. Amen? Zealous for what God wants us to do for Him. How can I serve you? How can I help you? Right? That's the kind of attitude, a Christian attitude, all of us should have. How can I be of service to you? Because we're supposed to have a, 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 a heart of being a humble servant, right? We're supposed to have a humble servant's heart, right? How can I help you? How, how, how may I be of service for you, to you, right? We're not supposed to be selfish. We're not supposed to be thinking of ourselves. We're supposed to be thinking of others, right? Love our neighbor. As what? Ourselves. Love God first and love our neighbors as ourselves. There's no, and being Christian is not time to be selfish. It's about sharing the gospel and living out the gospel. Right? Siendo un cristiano no hay tiempo de ser, este, de estar pensando lo más en ti. ¿Verdad? Siendo un cristiano es, es este, no, no hacer avaricioso. Porque tenemos que hablar y predicar y ministrar el Evangelio de Dios. ¿Verdad? Bien, bien. Tenemos que dar nuestro testimonio. Tenemos que apuntar a la gente a Cristo. Tenemos que vivir el Evangelio. Bien. Y tenemos que este, hablar del Evangelio. Porque todos nosotros somos misioneros, misioneros en este mundo extranjero. Nosotros cristianos somos extranjeros. Somos la minoría. Christians are in the minority. Right? We're living in a strange land. We're not of this world. We live in this world, but we're not of this world. When we accepted Christ, we became strangers to the world. We became a peculiar people. Amen? You get it? Amen. We're supposed to be different. We're not supposed to look like the world. We're not supposed to uh, 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 appease the world. If you can't see, if you can't see a difference in my life, then I'm doing something wrong. If you're looking and behaving like the world, there's something wrong with your Christianism. Amen. But if they see you being peculiar or weird in a positive way, then that's a good thing. That's a powerful thing because it leads them to Christ. Amen? It says, this is how Jesus came to save us and re 
redeem us and to make us his glorious church. Right? To make us a peculiar people. Peculiar people are not the popular people, brothers and sisters. We're not popular. We're not supposed to be popular. Cristianos no tienen que ser populares. Debemos, debemos que ser peculiar. Debemos que ser e extraños. Diferente al mundo. Amen. This is how the sinless, this is how the sinless Jesus in 1 John chapter 3 verse 5 took away the sins of the world. 1 Juan 3, 5. Amen. Así es como Cristo los quitó los pecados al mundo. It says, and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. En Cristo no hay pecado. But he, but he became sin for us, and he died for it, even death on a cross. Amen. Amen. In him there was no sin. In him was only perfection. In him was only the, the nature of God. Amen. In Christ was the fullness of God bodily in the flesh. That's what the scripture means. That Christ was the, the image of God in the flesh. When, when people back then were looking at Christ, they were looking at God. Amen. Jesus Christ carried the sins of the whole world, even though he was sinless and took them to the cross and died for them. Cristo cargó los pecados del mundo, aunque él no era pecador. Y lo tomó a la cruz y murió por esos pecados. He did this so that we might be righteous in the sight of God. Él lo hizo, él hizo eso para que nosotros seamos justificados a frente de Dios. Amen. Amen. But there is no way. There is no other way. Or person or deity in Acts chapter 4 verse 12 in which all sinners can be saved. There, there's only one way. There's only one truth and one life. No one cometh unto the Father, but through Christ. No one can come to Jesus unless the Father who sent him draws him to him, to Christ. Amen? Everything points to who? Christ. It says, neither is there salvation in any other, despite what the world may say, that there are three ways to heaven, that there, 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 that, that there are many ways to Christ, or that there are many ways to the Father. That is the devil's lie. Right? Because look what the scripture says. Neither is there, it says, neither is there salvation in any other. Right? There's only one way, one truth, and one life. Right? And that is Christ, who is the truth, Christ, who is the way, Christ, who gives life. Amen? Amen, amen. Yes, it is. It says, for everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is a promise. Cualquier persona que habla o invoca el nombre de Jesús va a ser salvado. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen? Whoever sincerely cries out the name of Jesus Christ, which means God is salvation, shall be saved. Amen? It's God's promise, brothers and sisters. It's God's promise. In the name of Jesus means God is salvation. Right? Like I said in the beginning. And Christ always existed. Let us come to the altar this morning. Let us come. Let us stand this morning. I would like to open the, the altar this morning for a prayer. This time I would like for us to pray for this morning's. Uh, I would like to turn over the services over to Sister Carolina.